we'll just scrape off any rubbish on here that scrapes off easily. Sort of greasy looking stuff there, that green stuff would have been light corrosion. That looks fine. Right. And the leatherettes from the camera front. I've got to be a bit careful there, that looks a bit broken, so I don't want that coming apart on me. That little alum aluminium disc there, that covers a port on the front of the camera which we didn't need to have anything to do with. It's supposed to give you access for adjusting the shutter release but uh, I've never found it particularly helpful in that regard. There's a couple of layers of adhesive on this disc. This is from the bottom of the film advance, of course. It'll make it a bit lumpy looking, so I'm trying to scrape the worst of that off. You have to be quite cautious doing this. You don't want to pull your leatherette apart while you're trying to clean things. And the smallest piece is the little rectangular piece from the front of the shutter release. Okay, with the worst of that done, now I'll clean these leatherettes with some naphtha to remove any dust or loose particles from the surface and any grease that might be on the surface too of course. Now the leatherettes in the front are a little bit more fragile, they didn't come off as easily as the leatherette on the base. Of course they've had a lot more handling, you're grabbing the front of the camera every time you hold it. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if skin oils and perspiration act to damage the leatherettes over time. Apart from removing lumps and bumps, the main thing I'm doing here is uh, of use is making sure that there's no grease on the leatherette so that, you, so that the adhesive will stick properly. Well I think that'll do nicely. start the process of putting them back and I think I'll start with the leatherettes from the front of the camera. So where is the camera body? Let's have this back in the picture. Now one thing I need to do of course is remove the shutter release button because the leatherette has to go under that. 
Right, let's be starting with this. These are fairly large pieces of leatherette so I can squirt some adhesive directly onto the leatherette and then spread it out. Make sure you get cover to the edges. Leatherettes peel up from the edges, they don't peel up from the middle. The edges are the important part. particularly corners just wipe off any excess there and taking our leatherette and our camera body get this lowered into place have to make sure that it's down firmly round that raised boss where the shutter release button runs and that it's tucked in at the corner down here at the bottom, that sharp edge. That's all looking good and tucked in along the hinge line too. I'll just rub that while that squeeze out is still wet that'll just rub straight away stuff that doesn't want to rub away straight away around the edges if I use the stick that had the glue on it and rub at it that will lift those loose particles off so I can get a neat line around the edge there of the body That's looking good. While we've got that there, I'll put the shutter release button back in place. And put that patch in place. And for that, I most certainly do not apply the adhesive direct to it. I'll put the squeeze onto a piece of paper. And then taking a toothpick, Transfer that adhesive to that patch, trying to get good even cover. Take my patch and get that seated in there. There's quite a pronounced recess that that leatherette sits into. So see that it gets in there neatly. Alright, so that leatherette's in place. I'll do its mate on this side now. Getting a bit of a mess with that piece of paper, so we'll start with another piece of paper. And another toothpick. Now, very large pieces of leatherette are hard to deal with because by the time you have your adhesive neatly spread out to all the far corners of the leatherette, it's starting to, to uh, cure. And um, it's not tacky enough when you go to put it in place. So doing leatherette on the camera back, for example, if you have that off and need to put it back, that can be a bit of a challenge, you have to work very quickly. Here I've been over generous with the adhesive as you can see and I'm just wiping off the excess. That looks good. Bring the camera body back in, slide that up into position. This 
little point down here, this little corner down here, that's the piece you've got to be careful to get into place. We have to open the camera back. This just has to tuck down in here. Again, I'm just rubbing that with my finger, which is removing any loose wet adhesive. And that looks like it. So that's the leatherettes on the front of the camera. They're looking good. And I can turn my attention to the base of the camera. Okay. This bit is fiddly because it's so broken up. It's uh, There are so many holes here that you're just putting your adhesive on thin edges all the way around. And this is a little bit like doing the leatherette on the camera back, as I mentioned. It takes so long to get the adhesive spread out, you're in danger of it having it cure before you can get it all in place. This adhesive is designed to be used as a contact adhesive. As intended by the manufacturer, you'd be putting a layer on both surfaces you would wait until the surface is tacked off and then you would press them firmly together that wouldn't work for leatherettes because trying to align things would be pretty much impossible let's get that out of the way camera body back into the picture get this leatherette laid in place Get the leather wrapped around the raised boss around that rewind button. Around the frame counter button. And round here, around that little shield that goes around the back catch release. The leather at there is very thin. I mean, that's less than a millimetre of leather at either side there. So that's um, very fragile. Okay, well, with that in place, I'll put my advanced lever back on. And get that patch in place. This is just borderline stuff this for size, so I'll put a drop of adhesive on there. And that was over generous, but let's, uh, let's get rid of some of that. Make sure I get good cover to the edges. That'll do. And putting that on the advanced lever, 
the leatherette does have a grain. You need to match this up so that the grain runs parallel. Well, you don't need to, but it makes for a neater job. And that only leaves the tripod sockets around. In this case, the surround goes over the top of the leatherette. It's held in with two small screws. Yeah, and I think those screws are steel, unlike the ones used on the earlier retinas where they were chromed brass. So they're probably stronger. The last piece of leather it is this one. And again it's an awkward shape. When you're putting leather it's on, I mean it might sound like a silly thing, but make sure you got them the right way up. I, I've seen cameras where people have put the adhesive on the wrong side and glued leatherettes on inside out. That's never a good look and you can't really recover from that. Right, so this piece goes on. Same deal, there's a grain to the leatherette, try and get it lined up. Well, with that, That is our camera, that's our Retina Reflex 4. This was camera 01 and camera 02 is the next one to reach the bench. And camera 02 looks very straightforward to me. I'm not going to bother filming any of that because it'll just be a repeat of this one and this one went pretty smoothly. This is camera number two. Now I peeled the leatherettes off this. Now look at the state of this. The glue line runs all the way around the perimeter, but in the middle there's this cross shape. Same on the other side. So the leatherettes were not glued on all the way over. You can see the cross shape there. They were glued around the edges and a cross shaped line of glue in the middle. I've never seen that before. That's very interesting. I haven't decided whether that's a useful thing to do or not yet. This camera. I think I noted when I was checking the camera out that the uh, tripod sockets around look, looked a little bit bashed about. Well actually it turns out it's worse than that. Because the whole tripod socket is off at a funny angle. And you can just about see it there, I think. It points off in this direction. It's much higher here than it is there. There's a, you know, that, that's a, about a millimetre and a half or two millimetre step on this side of that mount. So I haven't decided yet whether it's been smashed into the casting that the casting is distorted or whether this is distorted or both but I want to find out so I've got to see if I can get those three screws loose that they're probably damaged they're probably some very reluctant to move I would think now I don't like turning I think they're bent All three of those are exceptionally re reluctant to move. So I'll get those screws out, which will require solvent, hammers and who knows what else.
and uh, see what sort of damage we've got under there. It's all, I think those screws have been glued in place. Um, they don't really want to back out. And I'm going to try a drop of acetone on this one. See if I can... See if that'll help. But if the screws have been glued in place, why would anyone do that? So I don't really know what damage I'm going to find underneath this shoe once once I get it off, presuming that I can get it off. Yeah, screw's turning. Okay. Yeah, that is that screw is just glued in there it's reluctant to come out through that plastic insert this is this is a fairly damaged uh, it's clear from that indent in the middle there that somebody had screwed the tripod screw in too far but what I'm interested in is finding out whether there's any distortion in the body casting let's put that socket back in. That sits square. That sits fairly flush. I'll have to test this tripod socket. It may be twisted. It, you know, it looks like it's got a bit of a bend in it. That would have to be replaced. This plastic insert, it's certainly distorted. Um, the edge of it here is clipped off. I wonder whether someone had put this in the wrong way round. They have. Somebody, this thing as you can see is clearly shaped to fit into the cutout here. Some clown has forced that in out of position. Hence that line across there, where this was sitting up. Oh, that's interesting. So if it's put in properly, that's it's pretty flat. So. Someone hereafter called the full it had this insert out presumably when they were servicing the camera or when they were dealing with something to do with the tripod socket you can see it's clearly got a side cut off they ignored that they put it in clocked a third of a turn out which means that it wouldn't fit properly They've tightened the screws up, apparently with the aid of some glue, and we're left with a tripod socket sitting off at, I don't know, probably about 10 degrees from the horizontal. It's certainly glue. I can see it here. It's, it's probably epoxy. What an odd thing to do. Okay, well I'll have to see if I can um, sort this out. Of course the threads in the body will be the, the interesting point. It's whether they're still present after all the glue and the uh, running in of screws covered with glue. Who would know? The weird things you find in cameras. Well with the tripod socket from a donor camera put in place that sits entirely normally I did have to clear the threads in the in the, chass the chassis with a, uh, a tap but uh, now there's no problem so this is a real mystery I don't know what to make of this 
the, the screw threads here are absolutely clogged with adhesive. I mean, I'd have, I'd have a, I'd probably have to, I don't know how I'd get that stuff off there. I can run them through a die, but it's hardly worth the effort. But this plastic piece was clearly clocked a third of a turn out of position. And that's why that wouldn't sit down flush inside the casting. And that appears to be why this thing was off. I'm, I'm still... I'm, I'm still not convinced that that's entirely parallel. I'm, I'm not sure how you'd go about bending something as solid as that. Never mind. The answer's there. The answer was just to replace those parts with ones from a donor. So that uh, that little problem is out of the way. That was very weird. That's not something I've struck quite like that before. Um, however, so far so good. Well here's the black painted trim from the front of uh, camera number two. This was the one that I noticed was rough and it appeared that it had been touched up with paint with a brush most likely. So it just ain't pretty. You can't see through the black but it doesn't look nice. Well, it's not worth painting just one. So I had to sort through my parts and I had an even uglier example here. So I thought, well, I might as well paint up both at the same time. And this one can just uh, go to the spare parts, waiting for a uh, camera to be fitted to. So what have I got to do? Well, there's some glue on here for a start, and I'll need to see the back of that where the leatherette patches went. Then I'm going to have to remove all traces of the old paint. Probably give that a very light uh, sand with something to give it a bit of tooth. And then I'll use an etch primer followed by a black acrylic enamel. And then it'll be oven baked and hopefully it'll come out nice and hard and look just like a factory job. Well I think they look a little bit better. They'll go well. So one of those back for this camera and the other for my spare parts bin. So camera two. I did get it completed eventually. There were a few casualties along the way. The tripod socket, of course the, the plastic insert had been mutilated, was round the wrong way. The tripod socket here and the surround had an odd pattern on it. And I assume that must have been clamped down to something, a camera tripod platform, but it really never didn't make much sense. I wonder whether somebody was hammering on that and trying to get that tripod socket to square up. That would certainly explain the odd marks, that they're really big dents around that outside rim. So there was that. The uh, rewind post, that was broken, had to be replaced. The screws for the tripod socket, they were clogged up with araldite, I think, some sort of epoxy. And one other last little trick, I got the shutter assembled, got it back on the front of the camera, I didn't close the camera up, checked its action, everything worked nicely except for the self-timer. It just, you'd set the self-timer, release the shutter, bang, the shutter immediately released and the self-timer was running down in the background doing nothing useful. And I had a look at this. This is the projection on the blade actuating ring that runs against the stop. So when it's the self-timer is set, a little cam comes in here and blocks the action and so the blade actuating ring can't complete until such stage as the levers removed from there and allows this to complete its motion. And the lever on the mechanism plate has a bit of a, a, an angle to it. This point here has a bit of an angle to it too and I presume that's so that it's 
will slide off easily once the lever pulls out of the way. However, the bevel on both of those pieces was too big, so effectively what this did was this slammed into the lever and just pushed the lever back out of the way and then continued its motion. There was nothing else for it but to replace either the mechanism plate or the blade actuating ring. And as it happens, I had a good blade actuating ring there and I put that in and the problem immediately went away. Now the difference in terms of the angle on this tip here was tiny. It was just about too small to see any difference there at all, but obviously it was enough. It meant that the angle of those two pieces of metal as they hit each other would act as a lock and stop it from moving. Whereas with this one, it was just beveled enough that it just pushed it out the way. So there it was. So that uh, Retina Reflex 4, camera number 2, I thought was going to be no problem at all. It certainly had a few problems. And here they are. Both cameras are now ready to go home. The, uh, as you saw, camera number 2 was not quite so straightforward as I was expecting. But uh, regardless of that, these, this is a nice pair of Retina Reflex 4 cameras. And they can be winging their merry way back to the United States from whence they came. Thanks for watching.